Hello, everyone. Um, we are from Unfido, and we're very excited um, to be presenting our dev portal. Um, maybe we can do a quick round of introductions. Um, so my name is David. I'm a product manager um, at Unfido. Hi, everyone. I'm Francesca. I'm a tech writing lead at Unfido. Hi, everyone. I'm Phoebe, and I'm a technical writer at Unfido. Thanks so much. So um, cutting to the chase, so we are Unfido. And who is Unfido? Unfido is a market-leading technology company in the identity verification space. And our mission, um, as you can see also on uh, the, the shared screen, um, is to create an open world where identity is the key to access. So effectively, what that means is we really want to create uh, and enable a world where identity verification, validation, and also authentication uh, all unlock services for users in a remote-first uh, world um, in, into which we're slowly but surely moving towards. So more and more services are being moved um, online. Um, and we need to ensure that the people that want to access those services are who they say they are. So that also touches on identity fraud, which is a really difficult problem to solve. So um, as a team, we carry a lot of responsibilities uh, and our customers have to really trust us in designing their uh, customers' onboarding journeys. So at Onfido, um, our customers use either our API um, that consists of multiple microservices, or they can also use our SDKs. Now, the three of us um, are actually from a team that we refer to at Onfido as integration experience. The team consists of user researchers, designers, um, developers, two dedicated tech writers that uh, are on this call, um, and myself as a product manager. So effectively, it's our goal to build a fast, robust, and frictionless product experience um, for our customers. And um, it's effectively a B2B to C uh, business. So we're effectively really at the top of the funnel um, making sure that our integrators can discover, test, trial, and also, of course, integrate into our Unfido products. Um, and they can benefit in that way from things like release notes, API and SDK technical references, our sandbox environment, um, of course, in order to test, our Postman collection, and also our trial apps. And ultimately, what we want to achieve is to build trust with our integrators. Um, I'll now hand over to my colleague, Francesca, um, who will talk you through a um, couple of examples. So this is uh, the Onfido Dev Hub. Now, because our audience is made up of both um, prospects and existing customers, our main goal here is to build trust from the get-go. So we aim for our content to be uh, first and foremost transparent. As you can see, nothing is hidden behind the login. This is true even for uh, early adopter features. Everything is accessible, easy to find, and easy to navigate. So from this landing page, you can access all of the content on our dev portal. We've also got a search bar at the top, and we also make sure that we're properly indexed on search engines such as Google. Our content needs to be understood by users with uh, different levels of technical knowledge. So we've got developers, but also business stakeholders. As a result, we have a different, um, different types of pages from product um, informational guides to quick start guides and API and SDK reference. So here's an example of a product guide. So here you can see we use uh, diagrams to simplify fairly complex abstract concepts so that uh, anyone can understand even if they don't necessarily have broad technical knowledge. Um, we also provide a Postman collection accessible from the DevHub landing page, which comes with sample requests and responses for all of our endpoints and for every API version we have. Our DevHub is accessible to users with different needs. So we make sure that um, we use correct heading levels in all of our pages. We have sufficient contrast between text and background. We have text resizing in the browser, so whether you're using a smaller device or a larger one, the text will scale with that. Um, our page titles can be read by screen readers, and we use um, text alternatives to describe any images that we might use, such as the diagrams. Our documentation is comprehensive. We have everything in one place, so you've got the API references, the client libraries, everything accessible from that one entry point, which is the Dev Hub. And lastly, we make sure that our documentation is up to date and actively maintained. So it reflects 
the current state of a product. Um, additionally, we version our API and we've got our API versioning policy right there on the Dev Hub that's accessible to all. We regularly add new content for our products, um, whether they're new products or existing products, uh, in which case we're um, implementing user feedback we receive. And I'm going to be going through um, more from a technical perspective how we implement our strategy sort of behind the scenes. So clicking onto our API reference. Um, so our API reference is our comprehensive technical documentation. And something that we've improved quite a bit on this is trying to build a unique technical architecture in order to demonstrate and deliver our content. So what we've built is these custom components up here. So in the top left, you can see these two drop down menus. These are components that we've built to solve two problems that we've had. And one is that we wanted to bring our SDK reference content and our API reference content under one single place, but we need to be able to navigate between these. So this drop down menu allows you to navigate to the web SDK. So for example, if I click here, it will take you seamlessly through to the web SDK content, which has the same design and feel as our API reference, really integrating SDK as part of our product offering. We also have this other switcher, which is for our versioning. So we've introduced more major and minor versions to our API. And this dropdown allows you to navigate to different version information for our API. So for example, if you're a developer actually used our API version three, then you can click on V3 here and it will take you through to our V3 documentation. So we, we also use um, automation in our, in our products. So, we have these API reference pages. What we've built is this script that automatically generates new content. So when we have a new version release, we can run the script and it will automatically generate our next version. So it will generate version 3.3, for example, if we were introducing a new minor version. And the real benefit of this is it means that we're able to provide like tailored content for each developer. We also use automation on our developer hub so if you see here under our client libraries and our SDK reference pages, these numbers are actually programmatically pulled from GitHub. So we use a script simile that we've written in order to do this. So that customers who are using our libraries and our SDKs know exactly what the latest version is. So if I'm on GitHub and do a new release for our Ruby library, for example, this will automatically translate to our developer hub page. So it does not need to be manually updated. So we use Docs code as our, our method for writing content. So we write in Markdown. And this is because we work so closely with developers, we feel that using the same tooling really allows us to work with them closely and gives us flexibility. So we use this in order to use automation and testing. So we have testing on our pipelines. So we use linting for Markdown, JavaScript, and TypeScript, as we use all of these in our content. We also have a checker for 404 links broken. So example, this link here, if that was broken, it would show up in our, um, in our pipeline as a flag. We also have end-to-end -end testing and band word checking. This is an example of one of our, our quick start guides. So we have used user testing in order to discover what people really want out of our content. And we've done this through direct customer feedback, as well as um, integration testing. And one of the key things that we discovered is that diagrams and presenting content in a visual way can really help people understand our product, especially because we are an API first company and some of the concepts can be quite abstract. So we use diagrams in this in order to allow people to really understand end to end how they would use our product in a unique scenario. Um, and we've had really, really good feedback on this being a key um, way to translate how, what we do and our services. So on our API reference, another custom built component that we have built is this search bar up here. So as mentioned earlier, we actually have federated search. So if I type in here, for example, document, you can see that there are results that come up from across all of our content. So not just the page you're on, but for example, there's there's results from the web SDK content, there's results from the other SDK, as well as our developer hub. So this search literally goes across all of our content. So it's, and this search bar is exactly replicated on our developer hub. So from either entry point, you're able to search all our content and see exactly the research result you're looking for. 
we have color coordinated these so that you can easily see which reference page it's going to take you to and that you can to have a seamless design and so that it's easy accessible for everyone so on our develop hub we include more than just content here we have our sdks our client libraries which are custom built wrappers for our api as well as our postman collection for testing our api and an open api specification which allows customers to machine read our api and integrate more efficiently okay thank you very much um and i hope you enjoyed the tour through our developer portal we'd now love to answer any questions you might have how are you hi welcome thanks for having us thank you for the demo so uh, are we waiting for phoebe or is she uh, not joining today she is she can't make it unfortunately but uh, hopefully the two of us okay. will be able to answer all the questions okay um and i do have questions and maybe <laughs> the audience also yes um you will see the questions but what i really want to ask first i'm going to take the microphone because i have it so even as an api first company um it isn't evident that you have super user experience um what effort really goes into this and like how old is the portal and what went to creating this who and who owns the portal you were mentioning that you are part of the uh, integrations experience team um does the integrations experience team own the portal and who writes the docs yeah so um the integration experience team does own um the end-to-end -end developer experience and that includes the dev portal so our um API reference SDK, all of that belongs to the integration experience team. Um, and as part of that team, we've got uh, dedicated technical writers. Um, this has been the case for a few years now. So that's uh, myself and Phoebe currently. Um, and the docs team writes the bulk of the documentation. So this is either from scratch or using an initial draft written by a developer uh, when we need some like extra context beyond uh, an open API spec. Um, the exception to this is the SDK reference, which still belongs to the SDK team, although we do review um, any updates we make before we publish them. Yeah, so I, I can I can elaborate a little bit more. So we, um, as a team, our focus and our mission is really, um, I kind of mentioned this in the demo, but it's really around how customers are discovering, um, testing and trialing, and then also integrating into our products. Testing and trialing, we always differentiate. Trial is uh, on uh, mobile apps. Uh, that we offer on the various uh, stores which actually gives you like a full experience of how end users are experiencing uh, the service that we provide because we're b2b to c so it's a white white label solution for our customers and then on the testing side is really around integration testing so as a as a team effectively our mission is really to make sure that the kpis that our customers have can be achieved regardless of integration methods so some of our customers use our api some use our sdk some use some sort of hybrids um, because we start breaking out um, parts of our SDK into sort of smaller components. And um, and so for us, that, that's really the, the critical path. And so as part of that overall mission, it's also to make sure that our integrators, which can be developers, but also non-technical stakeholders on our customer side, actually understand how they can be integrating uh, our products and actually understand um, how they can be using them and really understand the value. And this is where content, uh, developer tools, but also that a full documentation comes into play, uh, which is the technical reference that includes API and SDK content. Uh, and then of course our developer hub, which is um, kind of has a lot of developer tools like Postman collection, open API spec and things like that, but then and client libraries, but also touches on various guides. Um, so it's like really high level explained um, how certain products um, ultimately fit together to achieve customer value. And who creates the roadmap for the portal? For the portal, that's us. Um, that's us as a team, um, but we work extremely closely with everyone else in the organization because, as you can imagine, um, we are almost like that that one team that is sort of governing to an extent also how um, we're releasing and taking products to market because we own the voice of the customer or the voice of the integrator, I should say, from a perspective of how uh, sorry how products need to be packaged and how they need to be. Uh, developed in what way they're actually then useful and meaningful to integrators. Um, so all our product teams uh, and other teams are effectively owning other parts of the roadmap, which is like individual things. But then we really think about holistically, well, 
how does this all make sense? How can we all package it together? Um, how do we actually deliver value? And in what sequence um, should we be releasing um, products as well? Mm -hmm. And as hearing and channeling the voice of the customers, so <clears throat> I understood from a separate conversation that um, the overhaul that you did on the references and SDKs, that that was partially to solve a limitation on the existing setup that you discovered from uh, seeing user behavior and doing user research. So I don't know if you can, but can you tell more about this? How did you follow up and wh what are the changes and why? Uh, do you want me to take this one, David? Go for it, yeah. yeah. Cool, yeah. So um, first of all, we're lucky enough to have uh, user researchers, which I know is a resource that a lot of uh, docs teams often don't have. Uh, but on top of that, we also use a uh, full story to track user behavior through our dev hub and uh, delighted to request direct user feedback. Um, and basically what we found was that uh, information was pretty scattered um, throughout because we've got those sort of two different entrance um, points. Um, and the user experience was very inconsistent depending on which content you are viewing. Um, so our old API reference was generated using Slate. Um, and what we did last year was fully revamp it to use Gatsby instead. So Gatsby was a site, uh, static site generator, which we were already using for our dev hub. So to us, it made sense to bring all of these like, developer resources together and use a single heavily customizable tool for both, because it meant we could reuse components across them and kind of bring you know, a more cohesive um, look and feel to both. Um, the issue there is uh, a significant amount of our customers use our input capture SDKs, not uh, the API directly. Um, so the references for those were hosted on GitHub using the standard uh, README format, which meant we were, I mean, pretty limited in terms of customizability, branding, and things like that. Um, and we felt like it didn't really reflect the importance that um, SDKs have in our product offering and we didn't want to have those users feel lesser. Um, so hence building a script that pulls the SDK content from the GitHub repository that it's always been in onto our technical reference. Um, so we don't need to duplicate anything manually as a team. And then the SDK team didn't have to change any of their processes either. They were still making changes to the same repository since the source content hasn't actually moved. We've just changed how it's consumed. Um, so overall, that's allowed us to offer a much more you know, consistent user experience across the entire developer portal. Um, and it also allowed us to introduce that federated search that we mentioned uh, in the demo that you know covers the entire thing. So no matter where you are, you can find all of the content that we have. From the audience, what were the main factors in the decision to not require a login on your portal? And how do you feel that decision has worked out? Do you want me to cover that or you want to? Yeah. Um, OK, so it, um, maybe what is interesting is to consider a little bit the industry that we're in. So um, when we started in 2012, uh, there were already some uh, incumbent players uh, in the market. And so um, over the years, when we started um, building out our developer uh, portal and our developer experience, it was always extremely important for us to have a transparent experience uh, and an experience that is doesn't require any specific login, but really just share um, and, and not be afraid to, to be a thought leader in, in how identity, the identity space is uh, supposed to look like. And so what we feel actually is that that ended up being a key differentiator. Um, so to your second question, how did it work out? It ended up being a key differentiator because um, we win a lot of business because our, and I saw a similar question of like, how easy is it to navigate? We win a lot of business because our documentation is extremely easy to navigate. It's fairly easy to get up to speed, uh, to get sort of your aha moment, uh, download a Postman collection, uh, get through the getting started guide and actually um, create an identity check, um, which can be just a document verification or document and biometric verification. Um, and so that has just allowed us to, to basically get customers to understand very quickly what the value is that we're providing. Similarly, another reason of why we offer the trial apps uh, as well. So I think like when, you know, I, I heard this earlier in one of the presentations where um, it was said that um, basically the developer portal you, has a lot of uh, different types of use cases. Um, for us, it's, it's kind of, we only share the developer portal uh, in our technical reference, 
but we also have trial apps that sit on the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store. We also have a dashboard that is effectively the CRM tool that only customers have access to, which then has a login, um, where customers can actually then see when they're going through a trial or when they're, when they're in production, what are all the various things that are happening um, on, on their check side. And over there, there's also other things, um, some of them which we want to introduce, some of them which already exist, like um, various types of additional documentation, um, things like uh, easy ways, like no code ways to, to upgrade to new versions, uh, something we want to introduce, analytics, et cetera. And so that's like the overall package of, I guess, how we how we win as a business. Um, but back to the original question, it's really important for us that customers have a really clear and quick idea of what is it that we actually offer, right? So that helps us to um, yeah, also qualify leads uh, and, and everyone really understands instantly like what is it that we offer um, we're not afraid at all of um, of sharing that because ultimately we believe that this is uh, you know we're, we live in a developer friendly world. Um, we benefit if we engage with developers and, and ultimately that's really important to to just be open and transparent. Uh, and equally, people get in touch with us quite often um, to to ask questions. And we also understand from analytics very well how good our content is. You know, like uh, just by understanding of a certain piece of text being highlighted, what's entered in the search bar, et cetera. If that wasn't, uh, if that was all behind the login, that data all of a sudden becomes extremely biased to only people that are have a deliberate interest and maybe have a lot more patience. Um, whereas if we have everyone on the site, then maybe that, that can be different and we actually capture a lot more data. Mm -hmm. And my favorite question, accessibility. Um, what do you do to ensure that it is accessible to all the, all audiences? Beyond not having a login on the portal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so I can answer like in terms of content um, and making sure it's accessible, sort of readable by a fairly diverse audience with different levels of uh, understanding. It's um, by having like, a variety of um, content types. So if you look at the Dev Hub, we've got the general guides that are more introductory and kind of cover the core concepts around authentication and data deletion in a way that's understandable even if you have no technical knowledge, no industry knowledge even around uh, identity. And then we've got um, our quick start. So that's, you know, getting you through the end-to-end um, -end journey of actually creating a check with us and uh, using our Postman collection, which, you know, anyone who has credentials can, you know, try out our APIs even if they don't know um, the first thing about them, really. Um, then we've got our product guides that have um, a high-level overview of our product offering in non-marketing terms. So really descriptive, um, not too much of a technical detailing. And then um, we've got our uh, suggested client actions pages. So um, those are pages that give concrete examples of how our logic works. So example scenarios and examples um, of solutions. So what to actually do with the results that we're providing you with. Um, so that's from the like purely content perspective. Um, and then from the actual um, sort of screen reader, like more um, you know, user, um, sorry, I can't find my words. <laughs> um, <laughs> different user needs, let's say more than different user levels of understanding. Um, we, we do try and run the usual checks, um, but I'll be fully honest and say this is something that we're working to improve specifically on this quarter. So making sure that we have got those descriptive alt tags and, and such, um, because it's something that we worked on heavily for the SDK itself. Um, and I feel like portal's not quite there yet, um, but it is a, a priority for us. Um, mm -hmm. Sure. And the diagrams that Phoebe was showing, that yeah. always gets a lot of applause because it is in a certain certain slice of the population really understands your mind map better if you show a diagram, please. Yeah. Um, but then how do you create the alternative text for that? It's an excellent question. Um, yeah, right now we don't have descriptive text on those. Are you referring to the document uh, report diagrams, like the, the responses? Um, the question is kind of 
about all sorts of diagrams that explains a process that is very hard to parse when it's liquid text. Yep. Um, and, 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 and where the, the logical re relations and the circular fashion sure. um, is sure. depicted. But then how do you create accessibility for that? Right. Um, the way I'd answer this uh, question is that the, at the moment, it's it's maybe not as scalable or automated um, as, it, as it can be. However, mm -hmm. um, because we have um, true governance in place uh, within the organization um, of being having this team, you know, in place and having like clear understanding of what is being released and what uh, specific versions, um, we always ensure that that's up to date. So ultimately, um, it is uh, it's yeah it's critical for us to make sure that um, you know th there's one way of you can just read as you said the actual text uh, in the documentation. You can see code snippets. That's a slightly more tangible way. You can also use our Postman collection or sandbox environment, and you can actually see various types of scenarios. Um, or you can test it in a trial. You can see it actually with live examples, or you can look at a diagram. Um, those are all ways for us to, to basically share with customers of, of how this looks like. Uh, mm -hmm. In reality, um, it actually is, um, yeah, as you said, it's quite well applauded also by our customers. And it's, it's extremely useful because some of our customers are then actually building uh, their own logic on top of it. Um, and, and that's really critical for them to have a good sense of how they can actually yeah, basically build uh, various types of workflows um, based on the, the responses that our API provide. Um, mm -hmm. I think what we what we can do, I guess, in the future um, is also have like a sort of more um, automated way of how text can be produced on the back of it. But um, at current, we had we never had any like discrepancies where, where things were out of date, um, and uh, we we ensure that we evolve it more and more. Right. So with new API versions, sometimes on the minor side, there's various ways of how you can switch on and off um, various types of these breakdowns uh, that we provide. Um, and, and that's all kind of listed in the, um, at least the feedback has shown us so a pretty intuitive way uh, in that diagram. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking forward to what you will figure out. It was a bit of a tricksy question because it's like a diagram is already alternative non-text text. So like how do you translate backwards is uh, not yeah, figured I mean, out yet. The, the way we look about look look around this is um, in my head at least it's around how do we evolve testing um, of our API how do we involve uh, sort of that user acceptance testing for customers to actually understand what new features bring to them um, and that can be done via content but often um, you really understand API is not uh, just via content but also by actually um, running live examples and so that's uh, something that we do in our sandbox environment and that's something that we do in trials. Um, and we're, we're looking to expand that functionality further and further. Um, for instance, providing um, fake IDs or, or different types of IDs that can then trigger automatically specific responses that then give you a sense of, um, you know, fake in the sense that it gives you a, you know, non-validated or non-clear um, result, um, meaning that it, it flags the ID on a document side for a particular reason, and that gives you failure examples, and that then shows you in like how actually the product will look like in reality. Mm -hmm. So you can explore the landscape. Exactly. Thank you very much. Um...